everybody. Hey. We'll make creations here. I'm G. I'm Sherry. And today we're going to teach you how to do an airplane caddy. What is that? Well, it's a caddy to carry on the plane with you and hook to the back of your seat. Um, so that way you have a place for all your things and you won't be dropping your phone and having to dig it out from underneath the seat in front of you. Um, also, they are very good for the car in the glove box. Uh, so if you don't have a place to put your phone in your car, it's not very convenient. And, you know, obviously to show, to put your sunglasses or your prescription glasses or whatever. Or your passenger on a long trip, they like to have places to put their phone. Yes. And all their little gadgets. So um, it makes a nice thing for the car, especially well. for road trips. Yes. And so um, that's what we're going to be showing you how to make today. We're, we're and gonna we're just going to show you ours in person because these are the ones we made specifically for this trip. Um, so that's, that's how they sit on the seat back tray in front of you. You don't even have to undo the, the tray table. You just go in. They are... When um, we walk on the when plane... When we walk we, on the plane, we go right like this with our elastic and go right over the the tray table but we walk front. on the plane with it folded yeah, up yeah like this and all of our stuff secure so once we get in the plane we Undo just go it. like this and boom, put it on there yep only i didn't make the sound effect boom. Well, okay so that is that and um so i will show you a several different uh versions today this is a surged version and um so it because it's a little bit bigger than what the um the other sewn version is but this is the the this one's surge. so quick yeah so i'll be showing you that today as well and um so let's jump in and begin we're going to be using this airplane caddy template um and uh three two fat quarters and a piece of batting so I'll show you how to layer it. You're going to take your, we're going to be calling main fabric and pocket fabric. So on this particular one, I want to, um, no, give me the surge one. I want to call the greenish my, my uh, main fabric and the black will be my pocket fabric. So right now you want to put a fat quarter of or you can have a little smaller too, but when, when you have your template, you will, you will know if you want to uh, have a little bit smaller piece, but uh, fat quarters work perfect. So you're going to have a fat quarter of batting, a fat quarter of your main fabric, and a fat uh, face up, and then your pocket fabric face down. You're going to layer it just like that. Then you're going to take your airplane caddy template and you're going to cut it out around the whole perimeter of this. Now these have cut ends to where you can run your cutter straight up and into the, the cuts. That way you can make a cleaner cut. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can always take an ink pen and draw out this area and just cut as comfortably as you want with your rotary and then draw out with your pen and uh, whatever is more comfortable for you to do. So your end goal is to get your piece cut out uh, completely. And so here it is cut out. It's sandwiched just the way I d showed you just now and cut out. And now we have to make our marks. Um, we're going to look at the seven inch mark on our on our template, on, on our uh, cutting surface. And we're gonna mark the 11 inch mark. So we've got a seven and 11, so a four inch gap where we are not gonna sew right here. So leave that, leave that empty. And we're, we're gonna just, we're gonna start here and we're gonna quarter inch sew this around this whole perimeter like this. And then we're going to stop here. Now you want to make sure you really backstitch here and here. 
So um, because you're going to be turning this thing right side out and if you back stitch real well you won't be breaking any stitches. So next we will head over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew this a quarter inch all the way around. All right. I'm just using a 2.4 stitch length. I'm using a HP2 foot. It's a skinny walking foot. And um, I'm going to just drop my needle and then I'm going to come and back stitch a few times to make it strong right there. And then I'm going to just quarter inch all the way around the perimeter of this. She's also using the Janome M7 Continental Machine. Yes. So I'm just going to take my time around these corners. Um, you have to know your machine to know when to stop to make it still be a quarter inch. So You want to talk about the button that lifts the um, foot when you do your pivots? Oh yes. So obviously I want the foot to raise. Uh, when I'm getting ready to turn, I don't want to have to reach back behind there. So on the Janome M7 and quite a few of the Janomes, they also have this button to push that you can leave the needle down and the presser foot will come up, uh, which makes it very nice for applique and also for just any time you have to lift and turn things. So um, that's that's how, what I'm what feature I'm using for that. Just gonna go. And if you turn it and it's not a quarter inch, then take it back, back up an in, uh, back up a stitch like that, and then you'll be at a quarter inch again. Um, you, you have to learn your machine and and know where to stop that it still will be a quarter inch. So, and honestly, it's not that fiddly. So if you're not exactly, it's it's okay. 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 Um, you can also pin that. See how she just had to rearrange a little bit? You yeah. can pin that if you feel more comfortable doing that. Pin or clip. Uh, however you are more comfortable doing it. This is, these go really, really fast, especially if you are um, gonna be using the serger, which I will show you that version as well. Uh, it does make a difference in the size. The serged ones are a little bit bigger, but they all do fit the tray table in front of you on the airplane. Uh, on several different airlines, we have tried these. Every time we travel, um, we've been having them for a couple years now. And um, every trip, we have people asking if we'd sell it to them or do we have any with us so we could sell it to them right on the spot. We've had people want to make orders with us. So these, these make are, an excellent um, gift for the people that you know in your life that love that, to travel. That love to travel. So we have stitched a quarter inch all the way around the perimeter of this. Now we're just going to take our precision scissors and we're going to cut the bulk from the corners. Um, Be careful not to cut your stitches. Right. And also, first I like to do all my corners, just reducing the bulk. And then I will go back and um, do little slits on all those little uh, uh, indents right here. So I'm going to take my scissors and, and do a cut just here a little bit. Not enough to cut the stitches, just uh, 
to relieve some stress right here for when we're turning it through. And they turn much easier if you make just a little slit into that. Just be extra careful not to cut your stitches. Okay. And that's done. So we will now flip this whole thing right side out. Now, when you're sticking your hand in here, make sure that you're, you are going in between the two fabrics and not in between a fabric and a batting. So you're going to go right like this, flip the whole thing, um, and then, where's your stick? I, I've got, I call this my mommy stick. This is how we push out the corners. Um, first I'll get it pretty much around, uh, uh, pretty much pushed out. And then I will take my mommy stick and go in and push out the corners better. Um, it looks like a mess right now. You can't even tell what's going on, but in a minute we'll, it'll come to life. What she's calling a mommy stick is just a crochet, I mean a knitting needle that my mommy used to use. So, um, but you can use whatever you usually use to punch your corners out. Yeah, you can use chopsticks. Um, there's all kinds of turning tools uh, out there. And just keep working it until you can get the whole thing turned out. Sometimes you can turn them fast and sometimes it takes you a little bit. But we're, it's not a race, right? These are a very quick project and um, honestly so useful. So take it any anytime you travel, take it with you for rental cars, for uh, on the plane. I love to have it um, in the car when I'm traveling and I'm not the driver. I'm Which never is, I'm never the driver. I so say. I have my own personal uh, thing to hold all my stuff. So I'm not constantly looking for where my stuff is in the car. Not digging through a purse and all that. So I believe I've got this all turned out here. So I'm going to go give it a good iron, good press. And we will, I like to, to straighten it with my needle here first. And then uh, you're going to tuck this opening in where, where the opening is. You're going to tuck it in as if you, it was sewn. Okay, just take a look at it and see if it's following along. Usually, um, if you just tug at it right here, it'll fold in to where you need it. And then you'll go press that. We'll go right now and press this. So, I'll put it nice right here. And I like to get that opening closed first with the iron. And, oh, spray bottle. Uh, this is the, these are the best spray bottles. So if you don't like to use water in your irons, uh, just hit it with a spray bottle, mist it up a little bit. And I think I happened to get the one that has starch in it and that's totally oh. fine too. I can smell it. This is the one with starch. The one with the S on it would be the one with starch. <laughs> okay, so we gave that a good press. 
Now we're just going to go and top stitch this whole thing. And let me just press this from behind one time. And this is where you decide it, which one, which fabric you want for your pocket. Yeah, if you wanted to change your mind, you could totally change your mind. I'm going to be using um, the green as my main fabric. And so when I flip up the pockets, it'll be the black. If you wanted to change your mind, you could flip up the pockets this way and have it that way. So you can make up your mind, you know, right now. So let's, let's do a top stitch around here. I'm going to use a 3.0 stitch length and I'm going to go ahead and pull up my thread so that I don't have, oh, I'm going to top stitch it this way. Uh, I'm going to pull up my thread and so I don't have a rat's nest on the back of here. I'm going to needle down, needle up and pull up my bobbin and grab a hold of that bobbin thread. Sometimes the bobbin thread will pull up to where you can see it very easily and sometimes it doesn't. So there we go. And now we are going to just top stitch all around. I'm using black thread. That way you can see what I'm doing on this green. And I'm just going like an eighth of an inch all the way around and give it a nice aesthetic. Here again, it's very nice to have your uh, needle coming up for you and your presser, while your presser foot comes, your needle, your needle stays down, down and your presser foot goes up. That way you can turn your project with, uh, you don't ever have to let go of your project. So basically you're just twisting and turning to get this all top stitched. And next we will change our machine out for quilting. Um, if you didn't want to quilt this, you could use a fusible fleece or um, you could, um, that way you wouldn't have to, to quilt it. You could just use fusible fleece and the quilting wouldn't be necessary since it's a small piece. I personally like the look of the quilting, so. And it makes it sturdier. Yes. I like to have things quilted because it does provide stability with the project. So I'm going to be done with this top stitching. I will bury my thread. If I can find my needle here. Thank you. Okay, let's just bury this thread in here. All right. Give a little scratchy scratch and you won't even be able to tell where you did that. And 
Now, um, we're going to switch this machine out so we can quilt this up. If you didn't want to quilt or if you did it with fusible fleece, you could go ahead and bend your pockets up. I like to pin it in place like this. I'll just show this real quick. I'll pin them all in place like that and then I'll start uh, uh, zigzagging them on. But we're going to quilt it quickly. So I'm going to change this machine out to my quilting mode. And today I will be using my um, my straight stitch plate, which is the quilting plate. And I will use the QO foot. And I will put my machine in quilt Show that on quilt the mode. Green G so Here, that they can see it. Here's good. the foot that I'm going to be using, the QO foot. And it just attaches to your ankle of your machine. So you just put that on there like that. Show it now, G. Hold on, let me, there. And that's, see that open toe? That's the QO foot. So that's what I'm gonna be using to quilt this with. I will go in quilt mode on my machine on the straight stitch two mode. Um, let me just tighten this up here. And then I'm going to program my machine to go in stitching, in uh, free motion quilting. So, straight stitch two mode. And um, I'm going to take my Martelli quilting paddles, and that's going to help me hang on to this smaller piece. Um, and so here we go. I will pull up this thread. Um, also, when you're uh, quilting this, be mindful of your thread choice. So my, my bobbin thread is a kind, almost an invisible thread. It's bottom line and it's silver, um, which means it's almost clear thread. So, um, which is fun on this, uh, but I want the black to be showing the quilting on here. That way you can see it better. On the pockets, um, I'm not going to mind that the bottom line thread is going to show. If you care about that, um, then you'll want to just quilt this, uh, this part and then you'll turn it over for whatever color you would like to show on your pockets when they're flipped up. So you'll, you'll want to be mindful of that if you feel like changing it. For me, it's not going to matter. I'm going to uh, quilt the whole thing with the bottom line in the back. And when the pockets flip up, you will see the texture, but you won't really see the thread. So let me get this started out of this corner here. And I'm probably, I'm just going to stipple this to make it a quick, a quick project here, quick quilting, and uh, if you can see, uh, it's showing up really good on camera. The too. the panel, um, as I was saying, as you can see, the quilting paddles are helping me hang on to this small piece that uh, gives you a little bit more control, and you just move them out of your way as you see fit. You do want to make sure that you keep your any the any of the paddles that you use. I'm using the palm paddles here today, but any of the paddles you use, you want to make sure you're staying your needle bar away from the paddles. Because uh, it makes a big clunky noise when you do that and often it doesn't feel good either. So see here, I'm getting close for my needle bar to be hitting this paddle, so I will move it out of my way. And you can flip flop your fabric every which way to, to make it more comfortable for you to quilt. So 
I'm glad I'm doing this in black so you can actually see. Um, but yeah, if you were not wanting your, your pockets to be in, uh, in your bottom line thread, your bobbin thread, then you would just quilt this top and then you can flip it over and use your top thread on your pockets in the back because they will be flipping up. Hopefully that made sense. So I'll go down in here. Basically, I'm just giving this uh, whole piece some texture. Stop when you need to, to readjust and um, just make sure you're in a comfortable position. Now this, I really should be closer to here, so I'll just stop and reposition. Whatever you need to do to get control over your piece, obviously you got to make sure that the uh, magic, which is the no slip grip, doesn't uh, touch your machine because it's not going to move. So. With stippling, you know, there's no rules. In any of my quilting, there's no rules. You want to try not to uh, cross your stitches, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. It'll be fine. It, it'll probably, you will probably be the only one that will notice that. I am going to just hold this quick. See, it's much easier with the paddles. Let me turn this to where I can grip this better. Little sticky there in that spot there. Okay. And just a little bit more and we're done with this part. I'm just going to go right up here where I started and and go over those threads and then all I, I won't even have to bury those because I just rolled over them so I'll just clip it I'll turn it over and clip the back threads and here is your quilted piece okay now all that's left to do is flip your pockets up like this, get them where you want it, and um, you're going to pin these in place and pin it so that you don't have to move this as you're sewing the sides down right here. So. Just pin it in the middle because obviously you're not going to be sewing across your the top of this because that's going to be a pocket. So you don't want to sew here. You're just going to sew on the sides. All right. So here we go. Okay. Now. Now I'm going to switch my machine out to use this VD foot, which is a skinny walking foot that I can use decorative stitches with because it has the area for the needle to swing back and forth. And I want to use a zigzag stitch. Zigzag will make it nice and sturdy. We've never had an issue um, with these at all holding anything that we have stuffed in there. We're going to just switch this out. And make sure you put your swing plate in, which is the zigzag plate, the one that originally comes on your machine. Because of this area here, it allows your needle to swing back and forth. And create the zigzag stitch. You can Zigzag your, till your heart's content. Um, so we will put this in zigzag mode.
I also override my M7 to um, use the walk and foot feature uh, while I'm in a decorative stitch. So when you put the manual dual feed setting to on, it allows the zigzag stitch to show back up on your screen and you can use, quote, the walk and foot feature, which is the AccuFeed system on your Janome's if you have a Janome. So we're going to just keep our pin in. We're going to start up here at the top of our pocket. Now remember this is where things are going to go in and out, in and out. So right here you're going to want to reinforce these stitches. So when I start this I'm going to do a couple back stitches. I'm going to go back and forth a few times and really enforce here and I do it at the bottom as well but mostly at the top of all of these. Um, and normally I do all the right sides first and then I turn it around and do the left side. So um, just stick with me and you will see how easy this is. So a little tip on using this VD foot where I'm looking is at the space in between the foot because um, I have chosen my middle zigzag stitch and so if I keep my fabric the pocket um, if I pick if I have that the middle of the foot follow along the edge of that pocket it'll zigzag on there just fine so here we go we're going to go a few stitches and then we're going to back it up and go and back it up and then go straight through we're going to back it up here and then cut it off okay we're going to just cut our thread so they don't get in the way and here's what that looks like and it's nice and secure on there and now we're going to go over here and do the next one going to go start do a few stitches go back stitches go back and then go straight down through there and back up here at the end. So cut that off. And we've got that second line of stitching done. Here we go with our third line. We're going to drop our needle right here. We're going to start stitching, go back, start stitching, go backwards, go all the way through the pocket here. Um, and back stitching at the bottom. We're going to cut our thread off. Now we can do the other side. So I like to switch it this way and just start here. So I'm going to start at the bottom here and go towards the top. It's easier that way. And we'll just start and just back up a little bit and then go straight up through here. And then when you get to the top here, you want to back it up, back it up, and really enforce those, uh, the starts of, of the pockets here. Now you can remove this pin, cut your thread off. And the reason why you don't have to bury that is because you went back and forth on it and it's nice and secure. So next line of stitching, needle down. I like to do the needle down to make sure that I'm just right in the right spot. And back it up, and then here we go up through here, stitching it on real nice, and then we'll back it up, back it up. Take our pin out of this one, cut our thread, and do our last line of stitching. I'm going to drop our needle. Do a few stitches, back it up, and keep going right through here. Back it up a couple times, nice and secure. Take your pin out, cut your thread, and you're almost done. Now, all you have to do is do your uh, elastic so that way your 
airplane caddy has a place to hook onto the tray table or your glove box. So we're going to flip this over and on the top, top corners, we're going to flip this over. We're going to take a two and a half inch square and we're going to mark two and a half inches here and here. So all we have to do is lay our template on there and then we can mark this to where this is where your elastic's going to go on. So we're going to mark it here and here to indicate two and a half inches, right? We're going to do it over here in the opposing corner. It's very easy with the template. You don't even have to think. You just lay it on there and mark it. And then you'll take your piece of elastic. This is three and a half inches long. Um, it's half inch braided elastic and you will take this and find your markings. That's where the, your elastic is going to start and finish. So um, you can pin it in place right here unless you just want to hold on to it. That's fine. I'll do it on both sides this way. I don't have to stop and do it. So I'm going to find my markings. I'm going to pin it in place. Okay. And now we're just going to zigzag very uh, vigorously right here across here because this is what is going to take the brunt of the, the uh, weight. So we're going to stick this in here. Grab my thread. We're going to stick this in here and drop our needle. And then we are going to go back and forth with that zigzag stitch. Just, um, you know, I'd like to do it five or six times because I want it to be nice and sturdy. And I want this to last a long time. Of course, I like to have them for whatever season is going on. So um, it, it makes it interesting. And people always ask about them. It's a nice conversation piece. I guess if you don't want to talk to people on the plane, don't, don't use your airplane caddy because you will be asked a lot about it. We're going to drop our needle and just make sure that we're going across the end of this uh, elastic. Let me do a couple more times. There we go. Cut that off. Take our pin out. Cut your excess uh, threads. Every time you use your scissor button, it is going to leave you two little uh, pieces to cut off. So, and um, after I sew this elastic on, we'll go through and trim all the threads. But I'm going to stick this in, drop our needle, going to go back and forth, back and forth, three, four, five, six times. Whatever makes you feel comfortable, but I really like to do it a lot. And then here, drop our needle. I like to drop that needle just to make sure I'm in the right spot. And let me do a couple more times here. And there we go. Remove our needle. Our pin, I mean. Clip our threads. Let's just clean this up a little bit by trimming off all these threads. Um, on this black and white, you really don't see my threads. But go through and tidy your, this is the back. No one's ever going to see that, but tidy it up. And, um, oh, I didn't clip the ones off the front, though. Those will be seen. Now, if you care what color this is. This is a black and white theme, so I don't care that my bobbin thread is showing on the top. Just be mindful of that in case you want to have a different thread showing. All right, so now we will show you a different version. This is going to be a serger version, mostly done on the serger. You're just going to make uh, six sewing lines, basically, with your sewing machine. So we've got our quilted piece already. Since it's going to be on the serger, we're just going to go over there with our quilted piece and we're going to serge the, the uh, top and sides here and the tops of these pockets. 
So we'll head over to the serger and show you the serger version of the airplane caddy. All right, here we are at the serger and um, so this is the, the front of my project. So I'm gonna, when I do my pockets flipping up, uh, I still want this, this part to be the, the good side of the serging, not the underneath side. So um, I'm going to first flip this over and just do the edges of my, um, the tops of my pockets, okay? Just going to go like that. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to clip all these. I'm just going to clip these because I'm going to be uh, zigzagging over them so it won't ravel so I'll just cut these off if you feel more comfortable tucking those threads in um, if you feel more comfortable tucking those threads in then you can do that as well it's totally not necessary so now, when I, have, when I flip these up, it'll be the correct side of the serging. That's why I did it like that. So now, we're going to start here and serge this whole top edge. You're not cutting anything off, so you want to stay to the left of the knife. Yes. Okay, that's the top. And now I'm going to come down each of these sides here. I'm just to the left of the knife on the serger because this is the size I want it to be. So I don't want to cut anything off. You guys see how fast this is with the serger? And they're very sturdy because I, the original ones we made were with the serger. And it, I'm still using that one. Yep. So that is it for the serger. And now we will go to the sewing machine and flip our pockets up and just do like we did before and sew these sides down. Now you, you are dealing with a raw edge, so we will take extra, um, extra lines of stitching on the zigzag to make sure that none of this batting shows through. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go back to the sewing machine. Literally, if you want to make this as a gift and you've got a half hour before you need to leave your house, uh, you're, you're well within your time frame to make this nice gift. Especially if you have fat quarter sandwiches laying around that you have already quilted or did you know practice sandwiches on you can turn those into an airplane caddy very quickly yes if you know us you know we're always stressing about your fat quarter sandwich um, practice and we literally have lots of projects uh, for you to turn these quilt sandwiches into very nice gifts and things for yourself too be selfish make a few for yourself for every occasion. So we have uh, pinned these down, pinned them in place. So now we are going to secure this by doing a few lines of stitching and also it'll serve the purpose of no raw edge here for the batting to peek through. So we're going to drop our needle and you're still doing a zigzag stitch. Still doing a zigzag. Oh, it'd help if I hit the back backspace button. Back it up. There back she it said up. Backspace. Did I put? Did I say yes. backspace? I was wondering if I was going to do that. It's just a habit. Sometimes she says backspace, backspace, backspace <laughs> instead of backstitch. 
Now, if you've seen that, I went backwards all the way back up, and it's not hard to do because um, you're, you're, it's a small space to be doing that in. So if you don't feel comfortable, turn your whole project around and go back down. But I tend to use my reverse button um, and just get it done that way. So that's my first line. And see now it's thick with thread, so it's thread heavy, and you won't see the batting popping through at all. So she's just going to go through this, and do all the right sides first. Yep, I'm going to drop my needle. I'm going to back stitch it a couple of times up here, re really reinforcing it. Then I come through. To the bottom back stitch and I'm gonna go all the way back up to the top um, and then I'm gonna come back down again and cut that off and now we're gonna go to our next line of stitching I just do it this way so I'm not flip-flopping flip-flopping it's you know I do everything to be quick so that's the reason why I do it like that so that down here and then back up there go all the way to the top and then come back down and even though I'm repeating these stitch lines um, it's still very fast now we've got this and we'll cut all of our threads later but we're going to drop our needle back up a couple times there come up through here at the top of your pocket here you're going to really co go back and forth back and forth like that go back down to the bottom here and um, and then if you look and you see any more batting, just, just do it again. You want to make sure your thing is just engaged at all times. Show them. Oh yeah. It's not. Um, this, this hook here in the back, um, will come disengaged every now and then. Which and so did. if you hear it, which Sherry heard it, I, I was talking, I guess, so I didn't hear it. Um, and I didn't actually feel it yet, but I would have. This hook needs to be pushed in. So you can literally just run your finger and, and push it back into place. It does happen. Um, there's no way to... Usually you can tell when it's disengaged. Yeah. You can feel it and see it. And most people really don't even uh, know that uh, you can um, engage this machine on a zigzag stitch because normally um, the the zigzag stitch will be grayed out when you have your walking foot feature on the AccuFeed fe feature um, but there is a way to override it so we're gonna um, put our needle down we're gonna back it up a couple times here uh, and remember on the bottoms of these stitches you're not going to worry too much about reinforcing because we're going to go back to the serger and serge one more line on here. In fact, I will say you can, while you're at the serger, flip your pockets up and go ahead and serge them down if you feel comfortable doing that. Um, however you want to do it. I'm just going to clip a couple threads while I see them. Okay, now we've got one more line of stitching here. Matter of fact, I will do this line of stitching and I will go ahead and apply my elastic and then we'll go to the serger and serge that one last line. Okay, we're going to go up one more time and 
we're going to take all of our pins out and cut our threads a little bit. I'm going to take our two and a half inch square and mark. Make sure that you are marking in your upper right and left corners. So look at them, you know, look at it and then put it down to mark your corners so that way you don't mark the wrong ones. How do I know that? Been there? Done that. Okay. Two and a half inch square. Marking here and here, which will indicate where you put your elastic to sew it on it. So I'm going to put my elastic at this mark and at this mark and hold it in place with a pin out of the way of my stitching so I can stitch without removing that pin. Same way on the opposing side, here and here. Literally, I've yet to find a plane that this didn't fit on. We tried it on four different airlines. Um, unless they would drastically change their seats or something, you'll be golden. Well, you're guaranteed not to get a bigger seat. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So they just keep getting smaller and smaller. Yes, so. that is for sure. So we dropped our needle. We're going to go across the edge. We're zigzagging just across that edge of that um, elastic making it very secure because remember this is the part that is taking the weight of your whole junk in your caddy. All your paraphernalia that you bring with you. And some of the things we put in our pockets are headphones, um, glasses, chapstick, and of course the phone. drops, and the phone. And I will want to show you one variation. Now, of course, you can do many variations to this. Make it your own. I don't know why I just removed that pin, but it's fine. I'm going to hold it right in place, um, talking and not paying attention, but that's fine. I just held it in place here. And... few more stitch lines on here and done. Clip your excess threads everywhere um, and we will tuck these surging tails in on the edges here uh, except not these two bottom ones. We'll tuck these top ones in and we're going to go to the serger and serge that bottom edge and then we'll be finished with this one and then we'll show you this variation. show you this new ver variation that I, I customized for my husband's uh, airplane caddy. Let me just clip a few of these threads so when we go to show you it's not so sloppy. Okay so let's head to the serger do one, one line of stitching and then we are done. Okay, here we go. This tail we didn't have to tuck because we're going to serge this. So, uh, see here how I'm a little bit uneven? Doesn't matter, I'm going to surge it right off. I can cut off and make it even if it's not even. And now I'll need to tuck these tails in. So um, we will do that, but let's go show you the finished version of the surged airplane caddy. There you have it. So it does 
get, let me just tuck these under as if we tucked them in. And there is the surged, turn this the correct way here, the surged version, little bit bigger, not by a lot, but still fits perfect in the plane or on your glove box. All right, now we want to show you a modified version, which we hope that you modify them to fit your needs as well. My husband likes to use his phone on the plane to watch movies. So I have attached a clear vinyl piece that will hold the phone in place while he watches his movie on the plane. So there you have it. And um, hopefully you'll make lots of those as well.